Welcome back folks to more Let's Play Pokemon Crystal, no Poke Centers, no Pokemarts. In the last episode, we took down the Elite Four, so that was a huge accomplishment. That means we're pretty much finished with this Johto section of the um, of the game, and we can now finally head to Kanto. But before doing that, we have to proceed back to Professor Elm's lab, where we will proceed to uh, talk with him, because he said he had an item for us, so... There you are, I called because I have something for you. See, it's an SS ticket. Now you can catch Pokemon in Kanto. So that gives us access to the SS Aqua, which uh, allows us to sail to Kanto, essentially. So we have to first head to the Olive Wanted City, though. You traveled all over the world. Give my regards to Arrester Oak in Kanto. So, unfortunately, this uh, Pokeball is still here. This is a little Chikorita, I guess, over here. But, you know, it's going to sit there for the rest of the game, but kind of sad. Uh, I don't think we have our flying Pokemon with us, unfortunately. No, we don't. So I'm going to have to... Uh, walk to the next town and that means you guys are going to have to bear with me um, uh, apparently my speed up button isn't working right now so for once you guys will not have to bear with speed up button uh, so I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing but whatever we'll just deal with it and move on so here we go we've got a Pidgey and uh, we'll just run from that for now just get away and keep going just trucking along here. And unfortunately I can't pick up the berries that have newly grown. because uh, We're not into cheating here. We're sticking true to our, gu true to our guns. Uh, we said that we wouldn't pick up any berries. We only pick them up uh, one time use only. So we don't get access to those. However, we're almost here at uh, Cherry Grove City. Or town, whatever. We'll find out. Cherry Grove City, there you go. I was right the first time. Either way, we can head into the Pokemon Center, freely pick up our uh, Spiro, I guess, now that our Pokemon are fully healed, doesn't really matter which one we deposit. So, we'll say goodbye to Shuckle for now. I don't have any berries that I can turn into berry juice right now, so that's perfectly fine. At the moment, even if I f accidentally deposited someone, uh, I'd be perfectly fine with that. Dom still has his Ice Berry, just for kicks, sitting around there, so that's perfectly fine. Um, any Pokemon that were previously dead? and that were already in the box though, they're still dead, so I don't get those free heals like that, so... Kinda stinks, but... I'm still happy that our entire party was healed after that, uh... Elite Four fight, so it certainly makes up for it, because... Frankly, I thought there were a lot of items in Kanto, but realistically there aren't. I I thought there was, like, items all over the place, but I, I went to look at, like... to see what was available, and... There's not really much there to say, like, uh, there's a couple items here and there, but overall it's just... I think there's really two elixirs in the entire region. Uh, maybe three or four, I'm not exactly sure, but it's just... It's a little dicey, so I'm gonna have to avoid trainers as much as possible. So, here we go, we're now on our journey. And this old man says, whoa, excuse him, in a hurry. My granddaughter is missing, she's just a wee girl, you see. If you see her, please let me know. So the thing about this is it's a giant ship here, and we've got uh, eight rooms in total. This guy's not a trainer. This, I believe, is our room. Uh, it's where you can heal if you want, or access the PC and stuff, but we don't need that. We're not interested in healing. However, um, what we are interested in is finding, finding that little girl that's basically the key to getting the ship to dock in Vermilion. So none of these rooms really have anything. There's no items you can pick up on this ship. There's nothing really of use. This guy here, however, says, um, Can you look for my buddy? He's goofing off somewhere, that lazy bum. I want you to go find him. But I'm on a duty right now. And there's my phone going off again. So, uh, the thing is, originally in these rooms, there was one. In uh, room two here, there was no one here. But after you talk to that guy, his friend is now here. So, uh, we need to go face him. But before we do that, I want to switch Kote to the front of the to the front of the party, not to the back of the party. Because, um, Kote's got a psychic move, and that's gonna deal with this guy who has, a, I think, a Machop and a Machoke. So we need to talk to him, and before he gets back to work, um, we basically need to, uh, battle him. So, here we go. He's got a Machop and a Machoke, and some water Pokemon, whatever. <coughs> Shouldn't be too much to deal with. I probably don't need to use Espeon Psybeams, but since they were restored, and since we're pretty close to learning Psychic, 
I feel content in just firing them. Uh, like I said, PP we want to kind of manage because reali realistically there's not too many healing items in Kanto. But the thing is, we're not too far away from the end of the game at this point. Um, realistically, I could, I, I should be fine with what we've got. And uh, I'm not too worried about the position we're in. So, uh, I am going to try and fight as few trainers as possible, of course, just to be on the safe side of things. But at the end of the day, I think we're probably going to be fine with whatever we have. So, just fire off a Thunderbolt against this side. I think even Espeon could have killed it with something, but whatever. Uh, we'll just continue on here. The real, realistically, the um, the Kanto trainer, the Kanto gym leaders aren't that much ahead of us. And... Um, some of them are even weaker than us right now, so that's kind of interesting. But, um, like, it's two years later and their Pokemon are still weak. Some of them are weaker than they were back in Gen 1, so whatever. That's that's the way Game Freak wanted to design the game, but, uh, works for me. It makes things easier for makes my job a heck of a lot easier, and, uh, we're just gonna continue on. Espeon gets up to level 44, so that's great, and, uh, I think he's three levels away from gaining Psychic. Um, I don't know if we're, we'll get up to the point where he learns Morning Sun, but uh, whatever. I'm not too worried concerned about that. Either way, we're pretty close to uh, getting the ship to dock now. Once that, that trainer's taken care of, we can now freely head to the captain's quarters, I believe. So um, we can skip all this stuff here. And I believe there's no other trainers that we have to worry about. I think we can just freely head to the captain's quarters, which is right here, I believe. And yes, yeah, so here's the little girl, and after we talk to her, um, we'll get her back to her grandpa, grandpa's room, and um, I think that means the ship docks in Vermilion. The thing as well is this grandpa gives us a metal coat, which isn't really useful for us, but if you wanted to obtain a Scizor or a Steelix or whatever, uh, you could attach that and trade your Scyther and Onyx. So... Uh, it's kind of useful. I think Metal Coat actually has a secondary effect for Steel-type Pokemon. I think it in increases Steel-type attacks, but nevertheless, we're now in Vermilion City, and I don't need to worry about this ship anymore. Um, the whole thing about this ship is, in order to get it to dock after you use it again, you have to heal, and you have to use the bed. So there, I'm never going to uh, get on the SS Aqua again, because if I do, I essentially have to heal my party, and I'm not up for that, so... We've now arrived in Vermilion City, and we can now proceed to uh, the first of the eight gyms, so that's fantastic. We're, there's going to be a ton of progress in these parts, folks. Um, if, you were upset, if you were upset in any way about the grinding in the Crystal the crystal or the Johto section of the run, uh, you guys will be pleasantly surprised with this section, as I'm going to be making a ton of progress, hopefully. So, I'm first going to be looking for the um, Polka Fan Club, which is this one here. Uh, if you talk to the president, he's going to give you a free rare candy, so I'm certainly in favor of that. We're just going to move along here. And uh, you listen to his little story. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Talking about a Rapidash. Blah, 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 Hug it, sleeping, cuddly, spectacular, divine, blah, blah, blah. You, wasting our time. And we receive a rare candy, so look at that. What an amazing story. I I feel so enlightened at the fact of listening to this guy's story, like, you guys just won't believe it, man. Oh, that, that, that was such a riveting story, I, I, I want to listen to it again. <laughs> Nevertheless, I think there's a hidden item here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we get a free full heal, so that's fantastic, I'll certainly take advantage of that. And I want to come back to the Pokemon fan club eventually, but not right now. So, uh, here's some Surf, we can use Maria to Surf along, Nidoking King also works fine. And uh, here's the first of many gyms. So, um, the thing is, Malcat only has 10 Earthquakes, and Earthquake was going to do a fantastic job against this gym, but I want to switch to Xerxes because Xerxes has Dig as well, and that can take care of some of the trainers in here. Uh, the one th cool thing about this gym, I guess, in a way, is that um, the electric locks have been removed from the gym, so you no longer have to deal with them, and I believe this path here is the faces the fewest trainers, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, so originally, this gym, you had to um, check in garbage bag, garbage bins for electric locks that would open up the 
electric gate or whatever to get to surge. But the thing is, um, they throw you off in this one where if you're stupid and you don't go check the gate immediately, uh, you think it's still there and you go around trying to find locks and you're sitting there for a couple minutes and you're like, what the heck is going on here? And then lo and behold, you walk up and you're like, oh, the gate's not there. I'm dumb. So uh, that's how it worked out. And this Pikachu just wants to spam agility for whatever reason. But uh, we're hopefully just going to finish it off with one dig get it out of the way, and move on. So, there you go. Xerxes doing work, taking out Pikachus like a boss, and uh, making things easy for, easy for us. He's got one more trainer, or one more Pokemon. It's a Flaffy, and that thing's got pretty weak physical defense as well. It's, I think it's stronger on the special side, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, it's only level 33, and it's not going to handle a dig. So I'm perfectly fine with that, and we're going to pretty much move on towards uh, Lieutenant Surge. So that's fantastic for us. Realistically, I could fight the other trainers for some extra experience, but I'm not too worried about things at this point. I just want to get the gym badges out of the way and uh, move on towards the end of the game. At this point, we're just going to truck through and get through as much as we can. Um, I want to manage my PvP accordingly, and as such, um, Malk is probably going to be best to take on Lieutenant Surge by himself. Uh, at this point, I, just, I don't trust uh, Xerxes' dig to get the job done, so Malk's Earthquakes is going to Earthquake is what's going to have to deal with for us. So here we go, Lieutenant Surge. And um, the thing about the Kanto Gyms is you can actually do a lot of them in any order. You don't even have to fight Lieutenant Surge first, but he's here. We may as well fight him and get the badge over with while we're here. Uh, the thing is, a lot of the a lot of the gym leaders in this uh, section of the game don't give you any uh, TM moves. There's, I think, two of them that give you TMs, but the rest of them are just cheap skates and gave them already, gave them a Tourette already, or whoever was traveling through Kanto prior to that. Spoilers! Sh sh whatever. Anyways, uh, there goes Raichu. He's down, and uh, he's now going to send out his strongest Pokemon, which is Electabuzz. The good thing for us, he can't really touch us for anything, any of his powerful electric type moves. And we're faster, so that's fantastic. Earthquake is easily going to take it out. Uh, two times effective, 150 base power with our stab, times two is 300, so there you go. Electabuzz down, and Malk is just trucking through these fools. Boom. He's got three guys left, all of them which will be weak to Earthquake. I believe we can KO Magneton with Xerxes, so, though, so I'm going to try it. It's a, We've got a four times super effective move, which I am going to use this time instead of Flame Wheel. Uh, it should get the job done. I remember last time we had trouble with a Magnemite, or killing a Magnemite with Dig, but this time around, we're not going to fail. Let's go Dig. Uh, we're, not, we're a higher level than we were before against that against Magneton. And hopefully we don't miss. Please don't miss. Please don't miss. Please don't miss. And yes, we hit. Fantastic. So that should take it out, if I'm not mistaken. And yes, Xerxes gets the job done, so that's great. He's probably going to get a level, which he does, so he's now level 45. And I think that's the highest level in our party. And he's going to learn Swift, so that's great. Um, do I have room for another move? Let's, like, now that we're fully healed, um, I can teach Swift as a TM, but realistically, I'm, I'd rather have Quick Attack, and I'd rather have an extra, extra Fire-type move, so... Swift is basically useless to us. I'd rather keep Dig as well, since that's uh, that gives Xerxes some excellent coverage. And we have Swift as a TM, as I mentioned, so I'm just going to forgo learning Swift. At least... Yeah. Yes, Quick Attack has more PP, so we're not going to learn Swift. Whatever. I don't care about that. Either way, uh, the Tiny Surge is going to send out Electrode. We want. I would prefer to kill that with a fast thing. It could explode. Hopefully it doesn't. Um... I'm going to hope that Malk just takes it out and it doesn't explode. If it explodes, whatever, we'll throw a rare candy, we'll throw a healing item on it, and we'll just move on. But um, it is troubling because Electrode is a little fast, and lucky for us, lucky for us he wants to use Screech. Um, and that works out perfectly fine because we can just kill it off with an Earthquake. Uh, so, Lieutenant Surge isn't really too much trouble. Uh, Malk can get basically get the job done by himself. He doesn't really need any help. Um, realistically, he could have killed Magneton himself. And Lieutenant Surge has one more Electrode, which also could explode. Um, hopefully it doesn't. We now have a Screech on us, which kind of stinks, but whatever. So that Swift is going to do a little bit of extra damage than it would have. But Malk's got a 
pretty pretty decent bulk to take that anyways, so I'm perfectly fine. And Malk is going to clean out the gym, so Nidoking King for the win, guys, and he's going to get to level 43. So I believe that makes all of our party relatively even in levels, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't think anyone else really needs the levels. At least, like, there's n not as much disparity as there was in our jo in the Johto side of things. They're now, um, whatever. So we now have uh, the Thunder Badge, we can now move on. All these trainers we can't fight anymore, but that's perfectly fine with me. And we can now proceed onwards here, so it's all we're only up to 15 minutes, so I feel content to uh, move on to other stuff. And We want to encounter a wild fight. Whatever, it's a tentacle, I don't really care about that, we can move on. So, run away, and keep going. That's a level 35 tentacle, so that's actually pretty powerful. But, um, let's see here. Um, I think I want to throw Kote to the front of the party for now. And, actually, who has the EXP share? Let me just check that. Uh, it's not Kote. It's not Malk. Not Suicune. I believe it's Ranko. No, Xerxes has the EXP share. And Ranko has the Quick Claw. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the um, Quick Claw from Ranko, take the EXP share from Xerxes, give Ranko the EXP share, just to help her get caught up a bit. Uh, so there you go, she can have the EXP share. Uh, Xerxes can have his charcoal back, now that he's a few higher levels than everyone else. And Malk can have the Crit Claw. So that works out for us. And uh, even though Malk took a little bit of damage, I'm not too worried. Let me see, I did take... Yeah, I did throw Kote at the front of the party. So that's perfectly fine with us. Uh, I don't think there's any other items I can get in Saffron here. And we can freely move on. I'm not just interested in really talking to anyone else at this point. Uh, so I'm just going to continue on here. Apparently I can't enter the underground. So it's kind of interesting in the opposite sense that in Gen 1, you couldn't, you could only travel through the underground until you um, gave the guards that uh, water or whatever. But in Gen 2, you have to go through these uh, these gates instead. So it's it's kind of a little opposite thing there, but whatever. Um, we're not, we're gonna head over here to this psychic's house, and just like in Gen 1, he's gonna give us the TM29 psychic. So that's fantastic. If um, if we ever need Psychic again, we can basically give that to uh, Espeon, so basically we can run out of Psychic, teach something else, and teach Psychic again, so that's fantastic. I don't think anything else in our party learns Psychic, so basically Espeon's the only one that's going to benefit off of that, but it's a pretty powerful move, and I certainly want to take advantage of that. Um, I believe if you head to the Fighting Dojo, you can benefit from this guy who's going to give you... Um, oh. You don't, he doesn't give you anything, we can just pick up Focus Band. I thought he gave it to you, so whatever. Focus Band is there, and that's kind of a gimmicky item. I may just use it for trollsy situations, just to, on the off chance that it does work, but uh, I'm not, it, I don't really need it. Uh, the last thing I want to pick up here is, I believe in Selfco, I believe someone gives you an upgrade or something like that. Um, this guy here? Only employees are permitted to go upstairs, but since you came such a long way, you can obtain the upgrade. So I don't think you can ever head to Silvco. Maybe you can, but I'm not too sure. But he gives you an upgrade, and that essentially gives you access to Porygon too, similar to the Metal Coat. You throw it on Porygon and you trade it, and that allows you to evolve into a Porygon too. So um, I'm not too worried about those two items, don't really need them. And we can now freely proceed to uh, take on the gym. So, uh, similar to Gen 1, we've got a uh, maze-type puzzle in this uh, area here. And hopefully I can dodge this trainer, which we do. And we want to go bottom left, and bottom right, and bottom left, and yes, bottom left. So that gets us to Serena, and I believe Kote at his level should be able to easily take on Serena. She's got three psychic type Pokemon, of course, because it's Sabrina. And uh, Kote's got a dark type move, which is actually special in this gen, uh, in Bite, and should easily be able to deal with all of her Pokemon. So, 
here we go. We're going to hope for the best. Hopefully we can just quickly deal with Sabrina without too much trouble. Her Pokemon are certainly powerful, so we don't want to disregard that in any sense of the word. But if we took down the Pokemon League with this party, I'm pretty sure we can take down three Psychic-type Pokemon without too much trouble. And even though our Espeon is a lower level, we're pretty quick and uh, we'd be, we get, we're able to fire off that uh, bite. We also get a flinch, which is fantastic, so two bites is going to take it out. So I'm certainly appreciative of that. Espeon was probably the thing that I was most worried about killing. Um, maybe Mr. Mime, because it does have some special bulk. But, uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I could probably still 2 it KO with Bite anyways. Um, her last Pokemon definitely is going to die to Espeon, though. So let's see. Um, I could probably Shadow Ball, but we've got more Bites anyways. And Bite is firing off our higher special attack stat. And yeah, no doubt. Two hit KO. Um, Mr. Mime sets up a barrier which raises defense, but we're not attacking on the physically defensive side, so I'm not too worried about that. Bite is easily going to take it out. So there we go, two Pokemon down, and we're no worse for wear. Ranko also gains a level, so she's now level 44, so that's fantastic. Moving up in the world. And uh, out comes Alakazam, her last Pokemon, and uh, it's not too defensive, so I'm not too worried about it. Bite should be able to get a 2 hit KO at worst, just like Espeon and Mr. Mime. And there you go, 2 hit KO. He wants to set up Reflect, so boosting some more defense because that's fantastic when uh, I'm firing on the special defensive side. Uh, she wastes a Hyper Potion because I'm just going to 2 hit KO it anyways. Maybe I can get a crit and not have that matter. And wow, speak of the devil, we get a crit, so what can I say? I'm a pretty lucky guy. But um, we take down that Alakazam without too much trouble. It was going to be a 2-hit KO anyways, and we 2-hit KO'd it thanks to the crit. So take that, Sabrina. You try and hax us with items, and you get haxed. So that works out fine for us, and uh, we can continue on here. So hopefully I can figure out this puzzle backwards. Um, it's not too big of a deal. So we just go like this, like this, like this, I believe, and up. Wait. Uh, down? No, shoot. What am I doing? I think this way, and here. Yes, okay. I'm done. Anyways, um, now that we've taken care of that section, uh, we're, we're still only up to 22 minutes, so I feel like I can do one more thing before the end of this episode. So, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna continue on here. We can have, head over to uh, Celadon City here which is to the left, and uh, there's a couple light of different items we can pick up here. I believe there's a hidden item there that we can grab, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, no. Okay. Maybe it's the bush? No? Okay, whatever. Um, maybe I'm thinking... Uh, something over here? I think there's somebody that appears here at night. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Um, I could always just time warp and take care of that business. Either way, there's a very valuable item in here that, realistically, I don't think I need to complete the game. However, um, it can come in very handy in the sense that um, I, I've traveled through all of Johto to get to this point. So I'm perfectly content with using it. And here it is. We get Leftovers, which is a very fantastic item. Um, essentially, it gives me healing in between turns. And um, it's not a Pokemon Center, it's not a Mart. And I feel that I pretty much should be allowed to use it. Um, I don't think it's really necessary. But since I've gone, come all this way and I've earned it, I'm going to make use of it. So... Um, it looks as though I need cut to get to the gym though, so I'm going to have to go to the Pokemon Center, deposit Kenya, I guess, and make way from there, so. On we go. Going to go grab second out of the PC, finally, after <laughs> such a long time. Um, let's see. So I'll deposit Spiro, and I believe I can take out, uh, oh, don't want to exit the PC. I can take out second because he can now use cut for us. Uh, he's still dead though, so unfortunately we can't use him in battle. But I have no worries about this gym. Uh, we've got Xerxes, and he's basically just going to tank through this entire gym. So whatever, 
Let's just move on. Here we go, a tree can be cut down, second used cut, so there you go second, you get an extra ex extra appearance and they run. You're not completely uh, out to lunch. Either way, this old dude is uh, peeking in on these girls, what a what a creeper. But whatever, they're probably hot anyway, so what are you going to do? Um, here you go, here's Xerxes, he's going to go take on this gym and uh, hopefully deal with most of these trainers. I believe it doesn't really matter which way we go. Um, we have to fight trainers at some point, so here we go. Xerxes is going to tank through this gym, he's got his fire type moves ready to take stuff down and uh, plow through everybody. So first up we've got our victory bell, which uh, I want to say Ember could probably take out it, take it out, but I'm going to go with flame whale just to be on the safe side. So here we go. And Flame Will does take it out, no doubts. Um, like I said, Ember probably would have taken it out, but Xerxes even has charcoal, so it's even adding more to that, more to it in a sense. Up next is a Vile Plume, though. Uh, that's another thing that's going to be taken out with Flame Whale. Xerxes is just, just going to truck through fools at this point, and uh, down goes Vile Plume, I think. <laughs> what am I saying? We're ten levels higher. We've got a super effective move. It's going to take it out, which it does. So. There you go, extra 690 experience for both Ranko and Xerxes, and looks like Xerxes is pretty much staying at the front of the party at this point of the run. Um, at this point I don't think it matters who we take on, I'm gonna go with this girl here, but I think unfortunately we have to fight all of, all of these trainers, or most of them anyways. Hopefully we don't have to fight the other one, um, I just don't want to waste the PP. And this is a skip, skip loom. It's level 32. I'm going to say that an Ember is going to take this thing out. Uh, no doubts. So, let's go with Ember. It's a freaking skip loom. Come on, guys. Let's kill it. And Ember does get the job done, so that's fantastic. So, Xerxes' fire moves are certainly paying off for us. And I believe he doesn't learn his next fire move for quite a few levels into his 50s. So, um... For now, we're going to have to stick with Flame, flame Wheel and Ember. Um, I want to say that Ember would kill this thing, but just to be on the safe side, we're going to go with Flame Wheel. Jump Love is pretty quick, at least in the sun. At least in Gen 3 onward, but uh, in Gen 2, Jump Love is pretty useless. It's pretty slow without its ability, and uh, nevertheless, Xerxes is just going to take it out from here. Up next is a Hopip, and oh man, I, I, I need to use Flame Wheel on this thing, I swear. Flame Wheel is... I, I need Flame Wheel for that thing, because it's so weak. And look at this, Xerxes is still killing Hopips. <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> I swear he's going to comment on that so hard. Like, what do you have me do, still killing Hopips? Yeah, that's right. Either way, down goes another Hopip, because Xerxes still can't kill uh, anything else, right? Either way, uh, we're going to have to fight this one last trainer before getting to Erica. So, here we go. She's got more Grass-type Pokemon. Surprise, surprise, right? Uh, she's got a Paris, and that thing is four times weak to Ember. Or, four times weak to Fire, so Ember is clearly going to be taking it out. Um, it's 13 levels lower than us, so we should be fine. And look at that, Andrew learned to math in... Uh, the episode before we got to the Elite Four, I believe, I had some messed up math, thinking that 38 minus 36 was 1, so look at that, learning to math. Now I need to learn to grammar, right? But uh, up next is a Parasect. It's four times weak to fire, and I believe Ember should be able to take it out. This thing is incredibly weak, so um, Xerxes should have no problem. Look at that, it's Randy Moss! and uh, all these references to our first gen run, but um, we should easily be able to take out everything here. Up next is an Execute, once again something weak to us, and it's pretty low level, so we're gonna fire off an Ember, and Xerxes is trucking through this gym, just wrecking fools left, right, and center. And you know what? We have some extra fire type moves. Instead of taking on the gym leader, I'm gonna go back and fight that extra trainer. That's what, actually, there's two trainers I could fight in this gym, so you know what? I don't, I'm not too worried about our fire fire moves. 
um, I feel content to just stick here and uh, take out all these trainers, gain that extra experience, and gain Xerxes those extra levels that he could make use of. So here we go. He's got an executor, and uh, you got hopefully you guys appreciate that accent there, executor. And uh, Xerxes is gonna fly or fire off a flame wheel, which is easily gonna take it out, I imagine. It's, we're eight levels higher. We've got a super effective move. Come on. Executor's not that strong, and uh, we get that extra level, so Xerxes is now level 46, and he's certainly going to appreciate that. Certainly putting in the effort here, folks. So even though uh, he had some struggles in the Johto run, he's making up for it in this run here. And I guess we already fought the twins, so can't fight them twice. See, in later gens, that would be a double battle, but apparently you fight them as one trainer. So whatever, Gen 2 is a little interesting in that sense. And here we go, we're now taking on our third gym in this one part. So, uh, after this gym, I'm probably going to end off the part and we're going to continue on next part. But look at that, three gyms in one part. We're certainly make, plowing through this area here. First up, she's got a Tangela, which um, it's not really great on the fez on the special defensive side. So Flame Wheel should easily deal with it. Probably going to be a one-hit KO, a two-hit KO at worst. But, uh, whatever. Xerxes is ready to truck through these fools, so boom, 740 experience, or 747 I guess, and Ranko gets to level 45, so it looks like Ranko is sticking with you, uh, Xerxes, at this point. Up next is a jump bluff, and as I said, this thing is pretty weak, at least in Gen 2, uh, can't really do too much, and we're going to fire off a flame wheel to take it out. So on we go, uh, should easily obtain our third badge in this part here, and uh, that leaves us with five more for the remainder of this run, and like I said, uh, there's not too much left to the uh, episode, to the part. Uh, Johto is infinitely longer than Kanto, the, or the, the Kanto section of the game, so um, even though it seems like we have an entire, s entire second region to explore, it's not really that much in the sense that we basically just plow through every gym and uh, move on. There's our most powerful Pokemon, I believe, so... 40, level 46 Victory Bell, and I believe all she has left is a Venusaur. Nope, that's a Bell Awesome. So um, maybe this is her most powerful Pokemon. It's level 46, so they're tied. And uh, Flame Wheel should easily be able to deal with that. But what the heck? I I, I kind of like Bell Awesome. It's a pretty cool Pokemon. Um, it's one of the only Pokemon that can be evolved with a Sunstone, similar to uh, Sunflora or Sun Current into Sun Flora, but we get a critical hit there. I'm pretty sure it didn't matter. Um, we were basically trucking through everything with Flame Wheel anyways. And this is one of the tr one of the gym leaders that actually gives us a TM. So on top of getting the Rainbow Badge, which we just did, I think she also gives us uh, Giga Drain. So there you go. So it's it only has 5 PP, and I don't think anything in our party can really benefit off of Giga Drain, but what the heck, we'll check out check it out and find out and uh, hope for the best here. Let me just check here quickly. Um, TM19 it was, right? Uh, teach Giga Drain to a Pokemon, and <laughs> that's awesome. Second can learn Giga Drain. It's in our party right now, right guys? But uh, unfortunately second is KO'd, so we can't make use of that. But uh, whatever, we're just gonna continue on here. And uh, I'm going to cut down this tree, and actually, just before this part ends, I think I'm going to um, pick up the item that you can only pick up here at night, so unfortunately for that, for us, uh, we're going to have to make a time warp yet again, and that's probably where I'm going to end off this part here, so we're going to pop into the Pokemon Center here, I'm going to make a cut, so I'll be back with you guys in a moment, so just bear with me. Alright, welcome back folks, and uh, hopefully it didn't take too long. Uh, now is the time warp here, and uh, as you can see, it's now nighttime, and I believe at the back of the hotel, maybe here now. I don't know if it's here. No, it's not here. I think it's uh, to the left-hand side, which I was talking about before. Um, not here, right here. And I think you have to head to the top part, where some guy's going to tell you some creepy story, yada yada yada. And, uh you can get a free TM. So here you go. Let me recount a terrifying tale. Once upon a time, there was a little boy who was given a new bicycle. 
He wanted to try it right away. He was having so much fun that he didn't notice the sun had set. While riding home in the pitch black at night, the bike suddenly slowed. The pedals became heavy. When he stopped pedaling, the bike began slipping backwards. It was as if the bike were cursed and trying to drag him into oblivion. Shriek! The boy had been riding uphill on Cycling Road. but um bum For listening so patiently, you may take this TMO3, which is... Which is curse, I believe, and um, uh, it's kind of useful. You can throw it on a wall or a tank that's pretty slow, and uh, basically boost up uh, both attack and defense while reducing your speed. But it has an interesting characteristic on ghost type Pokemon that uh, we may or may not make use of later on in the run. But uh, nevertheless, I'm gonna switch back the clock here just before the end of the episode. So bear with me for just one more break here. Welcome back, folks. So, uh, now that our time warp is complete, now that we have have three badges obtained, I think, uh, we're gonna end off the part here. So we're gonna save our game, and <laughs> look at that, 82 minutes of game time, that's fantastic. But, uh, we have 11 badges, and we're certainly trucking through this run, so five more badges to go. Hopefully we can, can obtain quite a few next part, and, uh, move on from there. And hopefully I have my speed up button once again, because that certainly slowed things down just a little bit in this part. Either way, guys. Guys. Either way, uh, either way, guys. It's been a an excellent. Uh, Frick my life. Why do I always get tongue tied in these episodes? <laughs> either way, it's been a fantastic episode, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Peace.